morning. This is Father Heil, and we're coming back to you again for the One Book, One Cathedral, as we're going through Habits for Holiness by Father Mark Mary. Yeah, and I'm Jenny Saker. Um, we hope that everyone had the opportunity to uh, view the video that Father Mark Mary Ames put together for us. Um, if you didn't, it's actually on our YouTube page, our new YouTube page, um, which is Cathedral Parish. Go on there and check it out. But it was really cool to see that he kind of gave us a shout out and some encouragement as we're going to be reading uh, his book this summer. So, Father, what was a point or two that stood out to you this chapter? This chapter, chapter two, that we're going through, the power of relationship. Uh, what really stood out to me, if we just kind of go in order here, going to page 27, so we have this section of movement away from relationship. And this is something I think that is important to realize, is that we are made for relationship. And really, relationships define us in many ways. I think oftentimes we forget about it because we live in a culture that presents our lives as individualistic, is that we're just individuals kind of floating from one place to the next and not really thinking about how relationships actually are defining factors in our life. And we can see this through especially the Holy Trinity being a communion of persons in relationship with one another and the fact that these relationships in a way define God as who he is and that they are in relationship. And so us being in relationship with God is our calling as Christians. And so seeing that and then reflecting on our own life helps us realize that we ourselves have to think about how are we identified through our relationships with one another. Yeah. And one of the things that stood out to me was that um, the Holy Spirit is always guiding us towards union and communion with one another. And it is the devil that is causing division. It's always the devil. That's not something that the Holy Spirit wants. The Holy Spirit is always guiding us to union and communion with one another and to have um, true, authentic um, friendships. And this is what uh, remind me of St. Paul when he's talking about how do we know and discern who's at work? Uh, is it the devil or is it God? In our life in relationships and we can see in Galatians chapter 5 we have the famous fruits of the spirit and the fruits of the flesh or the works of the flesh which related to our own weakness or the effects of Satan in our relationships you know, the fruits being love joy peace patience kindness gentleness faithfulness the works of flesh being those of dissension, division, hatred, and all manner of impurity. And so he speaks about those things as a way for us to discern as individuals and as families who's at work in us, in our relationships. Are we allowing God to be at work in the Holy Spirit, or are we allowing ourselves to succumb to false ways of thinking? And another thing was that it, it talked a little bit about merciful love and how easy it is for us to encounter those in our strengths, right? Or in our like fronts that we want to put up um, that people see. But it is really difficult and we have to be vulnerable in order to allow people to enter into our weaknesses and our struggles. Um, and so, Father, have you viewed like relationships like this before? Definitely. This is something that we hit on a lot during seminary is trying to overcome fear, allowing yourselves to create almost a fake image of ourselves. And this fake image is what we then present to others. But we know deep down that what we're presenting is not actually our true self. And so we don't actually experience the love that comes. Even if the people seem to love us and to like us, we know deep down that it's really an image that we're creating of ourselves, not truly who we are. So creating this false image, these false pretenses, actually doesn't gain us true love. It doesn't gain us true, I guess, acceptance or a sense of being loved. Yeah. And I think something that I've been just trying to remind myself is that God wants to meet us in our struggles, right? Like he yeah. wants to meet us there. And so um, not only being vulnerable and, and open with, with those around us, right? Um, to be in communion with one another, but also being vulnerable 
with him too, because again, that's where he wants to meet us. And that's where, um, you know, the, the challenges, um, you know, that's where we can overcome those challenges and those prayers, um, by allowing him to, to enter in there. I agree. One image on the next page after talking about the merciful love is he goes into talk about prayer as a forge or as love's forge. And he has this great image, this great analogy of the sword that's being forged. I think oftentimes as human beings, our tendency is the path of least resistance, the path that's easy. It's so easy to move away from difficult scenarios, relationships that have to be talked out, communicated. Instead of doing that, we often walk away from completely, or we just avoid having the difficult conversations. That is one thing that during seminary and also as Father Mark Mary mentions, community life and also in your own families is in some ways the antidote to that natural human tendency to walk away from difficulty is you're placed within this group, this community where you're forced to have these difficult conversations. You're forced to change your habits. Otherwise it causes difficulties, division or avoidance. And so it's a way of being pressured or having this forging of your soul into good habits and also to change in yourself when change can oftentimes be the last thing that we want to do as human persons. Yeah, and one of the things that Father Mark Mary Ames touched on too is trying to find opportunities to serve one another in our friendships and in our family. And so I think that's something that I'm going to be working on this next week is trying to find new opportunities to um, serve, uh, you know, those that I'm in communion with and to just to die to self, find little ways to just die to self and to put my wants and needs a little bit on the back burner and to be able to serve those, uh, you know, whom I love in, in new ways. That's, that sounds like a great idea. I would definitely encourage your family, if you have a family uh, that you live with, uh, going over page 34, 35, 36, I think it provides some very simple, fruitful applications such as prayer, eating together as a family at dinner, and also finding different ways to serve one another in your family. Well, can you please close on prayer for me? I would. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to guide us and to be that source of life and love within us. We pray that you send down the Holy Spirit, that he might inspire us to greater love and service of one another, and to assist us in being more vulnerable in our daily life, being more vulnerable with those who love us and who care for us and live with us. We pray that you give us the courage to open up our hearts in all manners of our life and relationships according to your will so that we might know your great love and turn and bring that love to one another. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.